Vince Wybeck, good to be back with you. I do hope this finds you well. So as I record this in the middle of 2023, one of the things that has been a buzz, especially in the music creating space, is the subscription model. And I thought this was a, would be a good opportunity to throw a suggestion out. And whether you are looking to get started in uploading content or you do content on YouTube, I think this can apply to anyone. And I just want to offer a suggestion of making your own music versus paying a company a monthly fee to have music. Now, again, if you prefer the convenience of it, you have no issues with the subscription model, then fine. You're going to do that, and, and people have done it. I, I understand that because my suggestion will take some time, and for some, maybe that's just not something they want to do. So I understand the convenience factor. However, if you really are just fed up with the subscription model, there's a good chance you probably have something in your possession that why not do it yourself? You might learn a few things. You might come up with a happy accident. It might lead you down to some other paths that you didn't quite expect. Maybe you start getting into making songs or, or beats or sound packs or, or other things. And I think when you have the opportunity, especially when you are a creative type, I mean, I, I'm going to make that assumption when you're putting stuff up on YouTube, you have that. I mean, we all have it in us, but there's a very good chance that that's something that's important to you. So it would just seem very natural to create your own versus paying a company a monthly fee. So perhaps you have an iPad or a tablet even an iPhone, there are many apps on here. And you don't need everything that you may see, that I may share. One of the great apps to start with is AUM. It's kind of a mixer, some call it a DAW, but it allows you to bring in other apps. And typically, I'll just throw an example. This is not meant to sound good, anything of that variety. It's just to give you an idea. This is, and I don't do this all the time on my video because that's, I think that's another thing that's, it's personal preference. There's nothing that says you have to put music in your videos. That's not mandatory. If you upload a video that's just talking, YouTube is not going to deny you. So let's just start with that, that this is purely optional. And, and then we get into all kinds of different things in terms of you know, is it, because I, I just read the comments and people talk about that's annoying music, it's too loud, you start getting into those issues, and that's not what this is about, but if you want to put it in there, then this is something that I might do, and again, it doesn't have to be an iPad. Perhaps you have other gear, especially if you have synthesizers or groove boxes, hardware, and you want to have music in your, maybe it's just your, here's the other thing. You could just maybe have it in your intro. And then you fade that out as you come in to talk. And then at the end of the video, you flip it. You slowly bring the music up and then you fade it up as your video ends. That's an option just to give it a little, little spice. Or if you want something in the background, depending on what you're doing. And I think it, offers the opportunity to learn. It offers the opportunity for some happy accidents and maybe going down some paths that you didn't know versus giving a company money. So what I might do, and again, this is just an example because I don't have to use AUM. I could just go to an app and just kind of create something. But the thing that about the iPad is you have the ability to do a screen recording. So let's just pull up AUM, for example. And the other thing that I like about this process, you don't need to be a musician. And again, I'm, and I think this can apply to anything, but what I really like about this is having sequencers. So I come in here and I click on this MIDI tab and I pull up a MIDI sequencing app. And again, I'm, I'm going very high level on this. So I'm just going to pull up something here and I'm going to punch in some notes. 
nothing. Again, I'm, that's kind of how I operate. And again, this may not be for everybody. So I just get something started. And then I'm going to find a app to make some noise. That's kind of what I call it. So I just pick one here. And the cool thing is a lot of these applications have presets. Take advantage of those. There is no need. Now, if you want to, you can sound design, but it just depends on where you're at. If you've never touched anything, presets are your friend. Someone has created patches and sounds. And you can use these. That's the other cool thing is there's no need to pay for these things. You don't have to put anything in your video. So I can come through here and just randomly pick something. And then I'm going to go ahead and link everything together. And what I mean by that is I'm sending my MIDI signals from this application over to that application. And let me turn the volume down because I don't know how loud this is going to be. Then I just hit play. So right there I have sound. Again, I'm not worried about it being perfect. I'm not worried about any of that type of stuff. But I could just let that record. Again, I could just swipe down on the iPad, do a screen recording. I could let that record for, say, 30 seconds. And then I could split that up. And notice how when I stop this, see how that faded out? That could be the ending. So I could record this for 30 seconds. I could chop it up, maybe take the first 15, 15 seconds, put it as my intro, take the last 15, put it as my outro, do a little editing in my DAW choice. So my example would be Logic Pro on the desktop, and I'm done. Now, again, this was very basic. This was, you know, nothing fancy. But I had a device on me. I have some apps. These are not subscription the ones that I'm using aren't subscription. The, the, the iPad has been paid for. And I have the opportunity to learn some things along the way. I learn how to use this app. I learn how to, oh, okay, maybe next time I want to come in here and let's see, I want to add some drums in here. So I come over here and I know that I've got a an app here that I can come in, in here. Let me pull this up. And I can do the exact same thing. I can come in here. I've got presets. I mean, presets are your friends, so I just come through here, and I like to kind of randomly pick things. I can make a kit, so if I want to have something randomly generated, and then I can come in here, and let's just say I'm going to mute a couple things, a couple of these tracks, and let's go ahead... So if I wanted a little percussion in there just to give it a little bit of flavor, a little bit of spice, you can do this. So again, that's what I'm trying to suggest because this is fun. This allows you to tap into that creative space and there's so much more. I'm just using a very stagnant MIDI process here. I could throw in different things in here to give it some variety. So let's say instead of having that intro and outro, I would like to have something across the entire video. And, and then again, whatever your tastes are, you can have something that's very stagnant. If you like movement, you want to add a little variety. I mean, if something's playing in the background very low, typically your viewer is not going to really pay attention to that. But then if you want to get into jams, you want to give whatever you can mess around and this requires very little musical knowledge. And, and that's an important point I want to stress across. I'm not a musician. I don't know music theory. I've been learning a little bit here and there. But I really let my ears go. I mean, again, as I'm playing this, I can just listen. Okay, what, what needs to come out? What needs to go in? What can I mess with? Add, etc. You just play around. Kind of like when you're baking in the kitchen. You know, add a couple little spices here, test it out, see what it tastes like. Oh, it needs this, needs that. It's about having fun. And, and I think that's really at the end of the day. So this is allowing you to not 
be involved in a subscription model. And the work, when you think about it, as you start to get more comfortable with this, let's say you just have, or perhaps you just want to record one thing and that's going to be your intro period. Because that's one thing, and I'm really speaking toward those who are getting started. You're going to hear people saying, you know, if you're doing a podcast, if you're doing a, a regular thing, you want people to have something to recognize. So maybe you just record an intro, an outro jam, and you save that someplace. And that's your go-to intro. And you created that. There's a good feeling, too, when you create something. Again, that's, and that, that's just part of being a creative person. Even if you use the preset, even if you use somebody else's work because they put it out there for use. So that's the cool thing about it. So just a suggestion. Uh, I really want you to consider the option based on, again, that I'm here. And I often wonder when people are complaining about the, the subscription model, I wonder how many are paying companies to provide music in their videos or their podcast. And again, that's why I'm not mentioning names because I don't want to, one, get in trouble. I don't want to uh, step on toes. I know people are pushing these companies. There's affiliates. I get all that. Do what you got to do. But especially if you're in this music making space, and you have the equipment. I'm not, here's the thing, I'm not suggesting, because if you have no iPad, no tablet, no gear, then no, it may not make sense initially. But I think if you do the math, when you look at what something will cost you per year, I mean, you could pay, I'm just looking at a website right now. I'm not going to, again, not going to name the company. But let's say that I give them one of their plans on a yearly basis, $228 a year. And let's say I'm going to be in this game for as long as I possibly can. When you do the math, long term, that's a question you're going to have to ask yourself. Does it make sense to give them this amount of money? Or do I invest in something of my own and make it myself? That's a question you have to ask. And it also goes, what do you, what's your time? What's your patience level? This may not be something you want to do. Now, granted, I didn't have this when I when I say have this, I didn't have this ability to pull what up and, and show you what I did from day one when I started making YouTube videos. And to be honest with you, I did pay one of these companies. Because that is what I was told by YouTube, those who are the creators that are saying, you should do this, you should do that. I listened to that noise, and I paid. And then it was the reason why I got away from that is I saw a channel who is fairly big in terms of numbers, and one of their videos talked about how they make their own music for their channel. And they were saying the exact same thing that I am saying in terms of why pay for it when you can make it yourself. And the cool thing is they had the exact same approach. They're not a musician. They're not concerned about it being perfect, it being professional. And all they had was a keyboard, a MIDI keyboard, and a software application. That's it. And the, the keyboard probably costs, it costs less than 100 bucks. So that was their investment, and, and they don't have a subscription model. They have a mic. They did some vocals, and they did, and that's it. And when I saw that, I, I immediately, because I had a few pieces of things, and I immediately canceled my subscription with this company. Now, again, I don't do it all the time. That's just a personal preference. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But that's the cool thing when you have, and, and think about it, if you, if you decide not to do that, let's say you have that same thought process, well, I don't feel like doing it all the time. Why give money to a company every month if you're not going to use it in every single video? That, to me, is another benefit of this type of a setup. Maybe you're just not feeling like going to search for a song because, again, I know you have to put some work in here. 
but then when you put it in your video, you still have to download that that song from the site. You still have to add it to your video. You still have to do the editing. So yes, there's that extra step. But if for whatever reason, when you do a video, you don't feel like throwing music in it, you're still paying that money to that company. And depend on, also depending on how much content you put out. If you put out a daily video, yeah, there, there could be some justification to that sub model. But if you do just a, a few videos a month, this is where something like this would make more sense in terms of paying them X amount of money and you're not really using it very often. But again, the choice is yours. I'm just offering a suggestion and I think you would have a lot more fun. And there's just that personal satisfaction of you. Again, I understand you're using presets. You're using, and again, here's a cool thing. Let's say you, this is one of the things I'm talking about. You get comfortable with this. And then suddenly you start to become curious. Oh, let's start breaking this thing down. It, I know it gets into rabbit holes in terms of, you know, some may say, I don't want to really waste time on that. But then you start learning about some things, and then you start getting into sound design. Then you start making your own stuff. And, and again, who knows where this could lead to? Maybe you start creating your own sounds, and you start creating your own patches and packs, and, and, and who knows? You might be the next big thing. That's just how these things work, and you can't do that when you are paying somebody else to get music. You don't even have that opportunity. So again, it just depends on where you want to go. I really like this option, and I'm just talking about an iPad. Again, I look around the, the hutch here, and there are so many other toys that can do, make music, make stuff. It's just a matter of how I compose it, what I record it into, and then throw it on there. And as I'm, even as I'm talking on this one, it's getting me inspired to do this in some more videos. Matter of fact, let's just go ahead and do it for this one here. So let me... Screen record. And I'm going to bring in the drums a little bit later. And let's just um, let it go. I'm going to look at the counter for 30 seconds and just let it go here. All right, so we can stop the screen recording. And then what I will do after I'm done recording this whole thing, I'll just send it over to the Mac Mini and toss it in Final Cut Pro, and there you go. So there, that's, that's it. Uh, thank you for sticking around if you're still here. I hope something inspired you because that's really all I'm trying to do is inspire you to do something and, and have fun while you're doing it. Because at the end of the day, that's what matters. Please stay safe. Keep your head on a swivel. And until next time, Sissy Hoto. Hoto.